Due to the coronavirus, late night talk show hosts are being forced to record from home, but their audio and visual quality is absolutely terrible. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. While now working from home, talk show hosts are trying to still do their usual segments and monologues, but from some very unusual places. Hello everyone, and welcome to Late Night from my hallway. Now, you might notice that I'm doing this closer look from inside my house, and it may be weird to do it. That is host of Late Night and Only Dad at the Picnic, who's looking forward to the three-legged race, Seth Myers recording from, it seems to be, a hallway. And they're not the only one filming from unusual places. Hello, Stephen Colbert here. And uh, tonight, it's returning my face back to normal. That's the Late Show host and apparently owner of an oil portrait painting which is magically getting younger, Stephen Colbert. As well as filming from their bathroom, Colbert has also filmed from their bathtub, a garage, and outdoors by a fire. So, as well as some of the audio quality problems that Seth was having, Stephen's got some unfortunate angle filming problems. So we're going to see if we can fix those. I'm filming from my laptop right now, and for a start, I'm going to get a box. This is just a box I grabbed off a shelf, and I'm going to bring it up a little bit so it's at more... Oh, that's, that's better! So now I'm talking at it more at uh, eye height, and that's a very good start. One of the biggest issues with these people filming from home has, of course, been the sound quality. I'm talking straight into just the built-in microphone in my laptop, and it sounds terrible. Over here, I have a lapel mic going into just an old spare phone I had at home. I'm going to put the phone in my pocket. I'm going to put the lapel mic on there and if we switch over uh, now this this is the audio coming to you from that lapel mic isn't that incredibly just like so much better so this is the sound in the room when i'm talking to the laptop and this is the sound in the room when i'm talking to the lapel mic up next, let's talk about what is going on behind me. That is a very large blank wall, which is bad for two reasons. It looks terrible and it is not helping the sound at all. We're gonna fix both of those. So for a start, I've got an old moving blanket. This is just the kind of blanket you would use for padding when you're moving. I put it on some coat hangers so I can suspend it off the wall behind me, above my sofa there. And so now, instead of sound waves just being reflected, backwards and forwards around the room, they're going to be absorbed, they're going to be baffled or damped by this blanket. I'm also going to move myself to a nicer background, so I'm going to rotate around. And, oh, look at that! Okay, so, so now the sound is going to be a little bit better because we haven't got the sound waves going all around the room and the visuals are a lot nicer. Up next, I'm filming this using the front-facing built-in camera in my laptop and the it's not, it's not good, it's not good. So the next step up would be something like this. This is my iPhone. I've just put it in a tripod. This is an iPhone, what am I on now? The XS. So it's not cutting edge, but it's reasonably new. And importantly, I'm not gonna use the front facing camera. I'm gonna use the rear camera. So I'm gonna put that kind of just behind my laptop on the tripod. I would spend more time working out the composition, but just as an example, we'll switch between the two. So this is me talking into the front facing camera on my laptop, and this is me talking into the rear camera on my iPhone. It looks like it's a little bit crooked, but hey, you could fix that later. We could go wild. Instead of going front facing camera, rear facing phone camera, we can go all the way to this. This is what I normally film on for my YouTube videos. It's a Sony A6400, and this is just the stock kit lens. So I've not spent a lot of money on this. Okay, it is a lot of money. It's maybe just shy of a thousand pounds for kind of the default setting, which I appreciate is a big old pile of money. But if you're normally doing a full production show in a studio, and now you've got to go from home, don't just use whatever's built into your laptop. Maybe upgrade to a phone or for not a big 
amount of money in the grand scheme of things, you can go for one of these. So now I'm going to just kind of a pitch position that. Okay, so, and I'm just running this on the default settings. There's nothing fancy going on there. So this is now me coming to you through a actual um, proper camera, not an expensive TV camera, just a pretty standard, this is what most YouTubers would use camera. So if it's that easy, to improve the sound and the visuals, why aren't these late night hosts doing it? It's got people on Twitter telling me I'm worse at YouTube videos than their teenage daughters. Well, no I'm 46, which probably won't surprise you now that you see what I look like when I'm doing my own makeup. Also, teenage girls are great at YouTube, and I know because I spent half the day watching makeup tutorials on how not to look like a ghost in a bookstore. Uh, also, shout out to YouTubers who've been doing this for a long time and making us pros look like real dopes this week. I tip my cat. There you are. That is host of Late Night and guy just realizing where he recognizes you from, Seth Myers, saying what we're all thinking. If people on YouTube can do this properly, why on earth can't these professional TV hosts get it? Right, and that's like Seth Meyers, like they know what they're doing as well as hosting Late Night, they do some incredible stuff behind the camera. They're involved in Documentary Now, one of the greatest TV shows ever. Maybe skip the first episode. And for both these people, I'm a big fan. I've been to a live taping of Stephen Colbert's Late Show, I think what they do is incredible, and I watch everything that Seth Meyers does. They really should be able to sort it out. And what I think's happened is they don't want to go into the uncanny valley of trying to replicate what they do in a studio at home and it looks weird because it's just just a bit off and so they're kind of leaning into the i'm doing this at home i'm working from home like everyone else i'm cobbling it together with just whatever i've got lying around but don't go too far in the wrong direction if you go for terrible audio and terrible visuals people are going to get distracted they won't be able to relax and just follow what you're actually saying if you're worse than most youtube videos and indeed worse than a lot of just video calls, it's gonna stick out, it's gonna distract people. You don't need a full professional camera, but if you want your videos to not be distractingly bad, just follow my three simple rules. First of all, don't use a front-facing camera. If you can see the screen, you're doing it wrong. You've gotta use a rear-facing camera. Even if it's just on a phone, that will be a huge improvement. Secondly, don't be in a room with large blank audio reflective walls. You want to make sure there's stuff on all the walls, even if you've got a hanger blanket up somewhere. And thirdly, use a lapel mic. All the mics in the world, if they're over where the camera is, they're gonna sound terrible. You need a, you need a microphone that's up close and the lapel is the easiest, cheapest way to do it. So there you are. It's not that hard for people to make good professional videos. And if you do do these steps correctly, before you know it, people in your comment section will be saying, are great at YouTube. This has been a closer look. <laughs>